I'm going to take a look at uh, theorem 5.3, which is uh, continuous functions defined on convergent sequences. So we learned about what a convergent versus a divergent sequence was in the previous video. So let's look at this theorem and see if we're able to actually prove it. <clears throat> All right, it reads, consider a sequence A of n and suppose there exists a real number L such that the sequence A n converges to L. So we're given some information here. So some givens. Um, we know that uh, the sequence a n converges to L. That's what's given, and that's given right here. And that L is a real number. Okay, uh, now we're going to further suppose f is continuous at a function l. So we're given that con given continuous, another given, f is continuous. And then we want to do some other things. So, so then there exists an integer, capital N, such that f is defined at all values a n for n greater than or equal to n. And the sequence um, f of a of n converges to f of l. So we're going to try to swing the old definition of the function limit and see if we can do the same thing with the sequence limit. So we have some pieces of given information. So with a lot of these, we're looking at uh, the, the definition here down below. This is a definition of continuous, continuous at a point. And these uh, big bold R's, these mean real numbers. R to R, okay? And this R is also a real number script R. So let's start the proof. So with a lot of these, we're going to assume some value uh, epsilon. So we're going to let uh, epsilon be greater than zero. We're just picking some, any value above zero. We know f is continuous at L. All right. That means there exists some delta and the delta has to be positive so delta greater than zero such that um, <clears throat> we have this now how would we write it in this well we would take f of x minus f of l Take the absolute value of that it has to be less than uh, epsilon. That's what we know. That's you know what's that's coming from this right here. We're given that. So if we have the values x minus l less than delta. So there exists delta such that we have this difference, the distance between our f of x minus f of l, that's gotta be very small, less than epsilon, if our x value approaches this value l. So if that difference is less than delta, this is coming from, if this, then we get this, the two in the green. So that's coming from definition of continuity at a point. All right, so now where do we go with this? All right, well, we know we converge to L, so we're gonna use the other given. So since sequence 
a n converges to l and again we've defined l at well i guess we'll just say l in r we'll do that then there exists some capital n such that we have the distance between our um, individual point a n has to be less than delta and that's for all uh, of our values that are greater than or equal to this capital N. So each N, each A of N, so for each N that's sufficiently large, we choose uh, the arbitrary lar large point and go from there. Okay. So if we're given this value an close to L, that's gonna imply that we are close, uh, our function's close to the function at L. So it's within this epsilon range. And our conclusion, so therefore, um, we conclude uh, the sequence F A N converges to F at L. That's kind of how the proof is broken down. It's again, using both the definition here as uh, both definitions, one definition for the uh, limit of a function, the other one for continuity at a point. And that's how we can kind of convert it over. And we, in the previous video, we talked a little bit about the, the similarity between the function and having each individual a n, so the function of a n. This reference is figure 5.5 .5 below. So this highlighted spot here, this is our l and f of l, that's our point of interest. So if you notice, um, <clears throat> we've got the continuity. So as we get closer and closer and closer from both sides, we're approaching that given spot. And that was kind of the the way that the proof went for the different limits, uh, which again had to be con uh, continuous at a point as well. All right, we'll see if we can get some examples in a little bit.